What's going on everybody? I'm back. He's back. So it's been a while since I've made some content for this channel. I kind of fell out of it a bit as I started doing more client work in order to uh, pay bills, eat, afford new equipment. But this is sort of my attempt to get back into it. And I have some cool news that I really want to share. So here we go. The other day I reached out to a company in the UK called Mike's Hard Seltzer. And in case you couldn't tell by the name, they are a brand that sell hard seltzers in a can. I spotted one of their cans in my local store and I really loved the aesthetic and the branding. I thought I'd get in touch with them and see if they'd be down for me making a few product videos for them. And to my genuine surprise, they responded. The seltzers come in four different flavors, lemon, lime, black cherry, and raspberry. I've got some new kit arriving on Friday. Hopefully it arrives in time for the shoot. In preparation for this shoot, I broke it down into different categories, including requirements. So what kit I will need, what tools I will need to make certain shots happen, what motion graphics I'm gonna use, shot list of course, extremely important. Some experimental shots that I'm gonna try but don't necessarily expect to work, stock footage I might need, and finally some illegible doodles. Since the product I'm shooting is a refreshing, sparkling, cold alcoholic beverage, I thought it'd be nifty to pick up some of these. These are fake ice cubes, but that's all I've got until the day of shooting. I can't wait for my gear to arrive, so I'll catch up with you guys in a few days. It's only Wednesday morning, but something has already arrived two days early. I've ordered quite a few packages, so I'm not sure which one this is, although I think I know, but let's find out together. So the first thing to arrive was my new Godox SL60W. I had a chance to shoot with one of these the other day as sort of a tester because I wanted to see whether it'd be worth the purchase. And combined with an Aperture Lantern softbox, it did an excellent job on one of my product shoots. So I decided to buy one and I caught one in a sale over Black Friday weekend on eBay. So I didn't even have to pay full price for this. And I'm really excited to put it through its paces. Now I've just got to wait for the rest of the kit to arrive. Okay, second attempt. I filmed this section about two hours ago and it was out of focus. It's currently Thursday night and I have the shoot tomorrow morning. Almost all of the items that I needed arrived, but the ones that didn't, it wasn't super important. I've hit a little bit of a snag, however. I got this beautiful color armor from Manfrotto. The texture, the color, the length, all of it's absolutely fantastic. However, these ones, not so much. The reason for these color armors is to shoot each flavor against the respective color in order to exemplify the taste. I thought I was being clever by being frugal with my money and picking up some slightly cheaper ones on Amazon, but it turns out, surprise, surprise, cheaper means that they're shorter and made from PVC material instead of paper, which I imagine is gonna be slightly more reflective whilst we're shooting. So that presents a new challenge for me to try and overcome, but as I always say, that's what filmmaking is all about. So I'm not too worried. On a more positive note, however, my snoot arrived today. I didn't know what a snoot was, and fortunately I watch amazing creators like Austin Paul who taught me what a snoot was, what it does, and where I could find one. So I thought I'd pick one up. Other little things I picked up, some black cloth, in case I need to kill off any light or reflections. Fishing wire, just in case we need to pull off any effects without hands in shot. Now all that's left to do is to collect the gear tomorrow morning, so I'll see you guys then. So it's Friday evening and I'm finally, finally ready, almost ready to start shooting. Just as I'm almost finished setting up, the final item on the list of requirements arrived. Finally got the first shot set up. I'm still sort of new to all of this, so it took a lot of experimenting. I'll just give you a quick rundown of what we've got going on here. We've got two Godox SL60Ws. I've got a Niwa Octobox on this side with a honeycomb grid diffusion. And right up here, I've got an Aperture Lantern as the top light and the back fill. I've got double diffusion on my key light just so we don't have any hot spots. And I've also got a bit of negative fill on this side just to bring a bit of shadow. HD monitor, Aperture Lantern and second Godox, C-Stand, a Tamron and a beautiful Sony macro 90 millimeter G lens. So for this first shot as a little tester, I'm gonna spray some water onto the can just to give it that cool condensation. 
So the first couple of shots I'm getting are simple enough in their concept, but a little tricky to pull off. I don't have any kind of slider or track or an edelkrone to keep this can in place. So I'm literally going to be slowly rotating it like this, just to get some nice macro shots of the logo and the flavor. So the next shot is nice and simple. We're gonna grab footage of the drink as it's being poured. And the way it works in my head, and the way I've set the sequence up already is, the shot's gonna whip pan up right from the text in the previous shot, and we're gonna see this can pouring downwards, and I'm just gonna use this cup here to catch the liquid. One other thing to note is I'm shooting at 100 frames per second, and I've cranked the shutter speed up to 500, just so we get a bit more crisp detail. One more thing to note about that previous shot, I wanted to keep the movement, the flow of the video going. Now the camera's on a tripod, but I almost wanted to have a downward motion follow the upward motion. A perspective trick that I use when pouring the can, I just move the can upwards out of shot. Coupled with some editing tricks, we should get a nice smooth downward motion. So that's the result after about 11 hours shooting straight. I'm like 75% happy with the result. I did make a lot of mistakes and I learned quite a few valuable lessons. Number one, when your girlfriend offers to help and be your assistant, don't say no, or you'll find yourself shooting until five in the morning. Number two, I shouldn't have taken on four flavors as my first ever product shoot that was going to be in a social media ad. Filming the lime took way longer than I thought it would, so by the time we got down to the black cherry, which was the final flavor, I found myself overtired, making mistakes, skipping certain shots, not utilizing things that I'd purchased, like the snoot. I learned that you should probably pick up your equipment the day before the shoot, not the day of the shoot. I spent a lot of time traveling around, setting up the equipment, playing around with the equipment, trying to get to grips with it. So by the time I was ready to set up and start shooting, it was already like seven or eight in the evening. And then there's just a few other things regarding shot composition, consistency, creating depth in the shot, little things that I picked up on in the edit. But that's about it from me, guys. If you stayed this long, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.